Hello guys, Alberto here. Thank you for visiting my ARQ Beat um, YouTube channel. Today's episode will be about the le basic lessons on how to shoot and use a compound bow. Uh, this is for beginners, of course, and um, hopefully this uh, video is of use. Um, I'll be touching nine parts. Um, the first part is for you to choose either a competition bow, a, um, a target shooting speed bow, or a hunting bow. Uh, once you choose the bow, um, then you decide um, how, how everything is going to be. Uh, and I'm not going to be touching the competition bow because I don't have a bow, uh, competition bow, and there will be another video, of course. Uh, for the hunting bow um, slash speed target shooting, you can use the same. If it's going to be like a hobby, not hunting, uh, you can use the same bow. <clears throat> I have two bows. Uh, they're for the same manufacturer, which is uh, Matthews. And this one is the Racine uh, 6.5. And I have the other one. This is just kind of flash. Um, this is, has a blue color, tint, camouflage blue, and it's a Racine 7.0. Um, okay, so then we're going to uh, go to um, part two. You have to find your leading eye. Uh, leading eye is the eye that regardless of which eye you close, it is, stays focused on an object. Um, so you may have... Um, also, a, you may be left-handed with the leading eye of the right and right-handed with the leading eye of the left, which is going to be complicated for you, so you have to decide um, how, how you're going to shoot. Hopefully, you're not, and hopefully, you're right-handed, leading eye right, left-handed, leading eye left. Uh, the way you find the leading eye is you're going to find, in this case, we're going to use uh, the air freshener. So. Uh, you're gonna go, I'm gonna kinda do it uh, so you can see it. Um, so you're making a triangle with your, both of your hands. And then you're gonna choose the object and then you're gonna close, uh, go with your right hand or left hand over to, con to make it a hole small. And I'm barely seeing your, the object. So then at this time, you keep your both eyes open. And now you're going to close your left eye. If you continue to see everything with your right eye, then your leading eye is the right. Then when you close your right eye and look at it with the left, that it moves the other way, then you know that that's not your leading eye. Only the eye that is able to see with both eyes open, and when you close one, that's your leading eye. Um, step number three is uh, find your draw length, okay? So to find the draw length, there is different ways. Um, the two that I use is to get a measuring tape. Somebody can do it for you, but since um, I'm on my own. Um, I'm just going to do it myself. So you're going to choose, you're going to measure between the tip of your left hand extended to the tip of your right hand. Um, and like I said, this is not highly accurate because I'm by myself. So, but I'm just going to do that. So you choose, you stand your arms straight from the tip of your, uh, your index finger to the other one. Then you get your measurement. In my case, it's of 72 inches. You divide that by 2.5 and you get a result. And mine is 29, 29 and a half. That's my draw length. There's another way also is by um, measuring from your wrist the middle of your, I'm sorry, the middle of your palm where the bow rests. 
the center of your body. You kind of have your arm straight, center of your body. And it shows 29 and a half. So when you divide 72, which is my height, happen to be the same length between my two arms, uh, by 2.5, it gives you 28.8. Um, this one is a bit more accurate. Um, so in my case, it's about 29, well, no, 29 and a quarter, 28.8 to 29 and a quarter. It's almost it's very close. So that's your draw length. And you either bow, you either buy the bow with that draw length, or you go to an archery shop and they can uh, set up that for you, making sure some bows are adjustable. Uh, and the Matthews, the cams give you the uh, the draw length. So that's how you find, and that's for you to be able to not stress the limits of the bow and for you to draw comfortably in the halfway. If you draw length and say you buy a bow, I buy a bow that is 27 inch draw length. When I pull it, my hand is not going to be full extended. I'm not going to get the best of it and I'm going to have injury and I'm not just, it's just not going to work uh, right. Okay. So it is very important that you have the draw length uh, set for you. Like I said, you either buy the ball with that draw length or you take it to an archery shop. Okay. Uh, so the next one is part four, which is choosing your draw weight according to your level um, and your composition. Uh, this means if you've been practicing practicing for a long time and uh, you're comfortable shooting a certain weight, then you choose it by that. That means you have your intermediate um, shooter. If this is the first time you had to go to an archery shop, or if you know what you're doing, uh, you can just um, when you buy the bow, it's set up to a certain weight. Or if it's fully like this bow, it was when I bought it, it was up to 70 pounds. Um, but I wasn't comfortable with it, so I had to drop it to 60 pounds. Um, so I took, it, I took it to an archery place, um, and they were able to lower the compressor bow, and uh, they um, loosen up the uh, composite limbs through these screws. And that's how this space gives more relaxed um, compression to the bow and it drops a, a draw weight so this bow is set up from it can go from 45 to 70 pounds so if you know what you're doing you can uh, use an allen key and the same turns you do here um, you do over here uh, but you don't feel comfortable you're a beginner take it to archery shop and they'll do it for you so once you um, get this adjusted you should be able the right draw weight will be the one where you can pull the bow comfortably and that you're not stressing or moving the bow left and right, up and down, and you can pull it, pull it um, significantly um, well, uh, so you're not like pushing yourself or stressing to pull it. So uh, I'll just make an example I'm just in the release aid. By the way, this is the release aid. Um, I'm going to go to most uh, talk about the release aid and safety precautions um, in a minute. And in this case only, um, for example purposes, I'm not going to put an arrow, um, but just to show you how it, you should be pulling it. It's like if you're going stressing and you can't pull it and go this way and that way and you, and you, just, you just get yourself injured. So you should be able to get the ball like this and comfortably shoot, uh, pull it. You see? Yeah. And that's how you know is the right draw way for you. Okay? Um, Okay, we'll go to the next step. So point number five would be to know your bow components. Um, in this video, I'm only showing compound bows. I'm not showing uh, long bows, recurve bow, or 
competition, bro. I'm only showing, um, showing um, hunting bows or targeting shooting bows. Um, components, uh, this is not gonna be in detail. It's just for you to know what you're working with. And uh, so uh, this is your main um, structure for your bow. You got the composite limbs that gives you the, um, the pressure to be able to move the um, string um, backwards and able to shoot the arrow. You got your cams, you got your axles, um, you got your uh, vibration dampeners. Uh, this bow has several ones here, here, and here, and this one is too. Uh, you also have um, harmonic um, silencers, which is this one right here, has two here, one over here. Um, what else? I saw a few more. I think that's it. Okay. Um, then you got your lean pockets, uh, your drawway screws. Then also you got your sorry, your arrow rest. There is different kinds. Uh, the drop down, um, and there's one with the three points, and this one is a whisker biscuit. Okay, I choose this um, because that's how I got my bows and I got used to it. Uh, you can choose. You can try different ones. So um, I like this side because. Uh, the first pin, it's uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. Now there's some size that up to, they go up to 70. Once you pass that, um, I recommend to use the one pin side. It will be more like competition. And it has a magnifying glass so you can see farther, but there'll be a different uh, skill that you have to earn. I might make it that video later, but there'll be a different skill. Um, and like I said, this trophy side has this, uh, like, well, actually, I'm going to leave it on. It has three um, um, light um, levels, high, medium, and low, and off. Okay. Um, so we got, let's see what else we need. There's parts. You got your arrows. We're going to talk about the arrows in a minute. And uh, that should be it for your bow. Um, you, you really don't need to get technical unless you're getting more into it. But uh, axle to axle distance, um, that's one. And let's see what else. Uh, this bow has two cams, one is round and one is oval. Um, and this bow will tell you that here, where is your draw weight that you can adjust to. If you need um, ha um, longer draw weight, then you need to change the cam, unless you have a bow that can be adjusted that way. We'll be moving to the next point, um, which will be point number six. And this is how the bow works. Um, like I said, this bow, uh, compound bow, it's more uh, complex than long bow or record bow because uh, it uses limbs, composite limbs, the flex and cams. Um, for you to be able to pull um, the string longer and able to shoot faster and stronger. Um, and it just does it with, uh, with the cams, okay? So by pulling, you compress the bow with the string and then when you let go, it releases. So that's how the, work, the, the bow works, okay? And the next step is point number seven. Uh, we're going to talk about safety precautions. As anything, you it's always good to do preventive maintenance every time you're going to use a device, machinery, a car. You check the fluids, make sure the tires. You do a check around the whole car. Uh, same thing with the rifle. Uh, you check the parts of the rifle, make sure everything is uh, looped and properly checked on. Uh, so uh, same thing with the bow. Um, make sure your limbs are not cracked. 
I had a friend who uh, left his compound bow in summer on his um, Jeep in the heat of the summer, um, which it can get up to 180 degrees Fahrenheit, and that cracked the limb, so it was bent. Um, it, it, the bowling had damage, so do not leave the car uh, inside. If you're using it through hunting, it's fine, but if it's, you know it's gonna be freezing temperatures, do not leave the bow in the car in summer or in winter. Um, okay, so you respect the bow, make sure nothing is loose um, on any kind of uh, the vibration um, rubber, uh, vibration um, eliminators, which is this rubber, this one right here, this one right here. Make sure your cam seems to be okay, no, uh, no clips, no screws loose. So you just pick the whole bow. Um, your uh, stabilizer. I'm gonna grab the other bow. And you need to make sure the, right here, this is screw, it's, it's tight. And uh, you're using your stabilizer. Uh, since it's kind of long, um, this is an eight inch stabilizer. And the other one is a five and you had to carry it in your bag or uh, which is a soft bag or a plastic bag um, a hard case you might have to take it off so make sure when you put it on it's all the way in and it's tight do not leave it like that uh, you don't want nothing loose that is going to make you flinch or uh, miss the shot and then you hurt yourself or you hurt someone so Make sure you screw it all the way in. And pin tight, see, and going over. Um, make sure with, uh, hope, hopefully, uh, whoever uh, got your bow set up, uh, screw everything well, but you don't, you don't lose nothing by moving parts. See, like this. Make sure everything is good, observe it, you know, screws, bolts, clips, um, extra noise dampeners, this right here, make sure it's not loose, this guy right here, this one right here, this one, sometimes it comes loose from here, so you need uh, crescent pliers to make sure it's tight, uh, this dampener right here, you don't want this cam, uh, this pins over here on the cam, it's very important, you're pulling and the bolt comes apart, and you're gonna be injured regardless if you bought it and it came on the mail or you went to an archery place. Also, uh, you wanna check your D loop, make sure it's not fried. Otherwise, it's gonna make you miss it. Um, and it can make you move the bow and arrow go somewhere else. So that's very, very important that you check the D loop. Uh, make sure all the components, everything is tight. Um, also expect the string, should be able to get a new string, but sometimes things are made on Friday when everybody wants to leave and go home and they didn't make a part well. So make sure nothing is fried in this part where it splits um, here on the D loop. If it looks like it's fallen and one is it's cut or the strings are coming off, you can't use it. You have to take it to a archery shop to get it fixed. So it is very, very important that you check your um, string. Um, the other thing is your wax. So just buy it at your archery shop or buy it online. You just push it this way. A little tight. Just push it. There you go. You got your wax out. The wax is um, keeps your um, your string that is more exposed um, because over here it's already has a special another. Um, layer of string to keep it because it's in, un, under a lot of stress so it is already um, protected but 
the part where it's light color, it's hard to see. Uh, but and also the string are um, dark color and you can see they're thicker. So uh, the parts that you need to wax will be this string right here. Just rub it both sides for, I'm just showing you, but put enough, you know, five, 10 passes and then go with your finger. Um, another part that you're gonna wax is from here to here and uh, in the pig hole. So you're gonna have to put wax in both of them right there and the, right outside the pig hole and make sure you wrap it good. I'm not gonna do the whole thing because I don't wanna make the video too long, but you get the idea. The other piece is right here, not here, here. You don't put in here and you put here and that should be it and actually in this part right here okay so when, when you don't see when it's a lighter color and you don't see a double coating then that's where you wax um um on your arrow quiver either you got one that just locks or you use this uh locking piece make sure it's tight it's not going anywhere you don't want this to be falling um let's see what else um okay for your arrows or uh, on your arrows i'm going to take this arrow out they snap in these two points and they go in this cover where the tip is There's several tips. Uh, the most common ones is the field tip. Make sure it, com it comes off because that way you can change it of tips. This is a field tip. They got the small game field tip, which is like this, but it's, it has a little spring and three prongs. Um, I don't have one, I don't have a small game, but um, it's just similar to that. And Mainly you want to may use probably a long bow or a curve bow because a compound bow will be too much to shoot on a squirrel or a rabbit. Um, but the tip is different. This is a field tip. Um, the uh, uh, the bro head, uh, sometimes they have a four blade. This is a three blade. Um, you need to make sure it's tight. You don't have to put super glue, just make sure it's tight. Uh, you also want to inspect your arrows and you should not be, uh, if you're a beginner, you might want to choose arrows that are between two to five dollars um, because you may be losing a few arrows in the woods or um, hitting the metal part or going into the wood if you're in a uh, target um, archery range. So you'll be spending a lot of money. Um, arrows run from two dollars all the way to twenty dollars so make sure when you get an arrow uh, you choose don't choose wood arrow do not choose I don't recommend aluminum which you can but um, do not choose wood uh, fiber and uh, fiberglass and choose only um, carbon um, blend or carbon or pure carbon that's the best ones um and also you had to put attention to the knockout the knock the, it goes right on the back make sure it's pushed in okay and it's not cracked uh the fletching it's it's good there is fletching that it's uh polymer or i don't have the uh the natural feathers some come in two inch, some come in three inch. Uh, really doesn't matter. Um, one of the important things on the arrows, if you're choosing a longbow or a record bow, your spine could go, you know, 500 spine or uh, 550. But when you use a, a compound bow, you have to use arrows that can handle the weight. Um, so we're looking at a 300, 300, and 300 to 350 in the spine, which is about 10 GPI. Um, 
grains per square inch of the arrow. How strong uh, the spine is dictates how strong is the arrow, the rigidity. Um, and you can tell because like this arrow say is 500 spine. You can curve it. When you shoot the arrow with a bow and you got 60 pounds, um, 50, 60, 70 pounds, the arrow actually, um, if you see it through a small um, slow motion video, it flexes like this and it can break. Um, then that's how you can injure your hand or your bow or somebody around you. So if you have a um, long bow or a curve bow, you'll be fine with 500 to 550 spine, but if you're using a long bow, a compound bow, uh, you wanna use 300, 350 um, spine, which is very strong, uh, 10 GPI. Um, like I said, uh, make sure your uh, fletching, it's not coming off because they're glued. And I'll show you the difference with this arrow. This arrow right here is 360 spine. It's harder to bend. This will be good. This is about three dollar or 350 arrow. You can use this to shoot. Uh, this arrow <clears throat> is made by Carbon Express. Is the 6075 Terminator. And this one is 331 spine. It says the specs, but it, um, online it says for 3, 340, but it's actually 331. And you can barely um, flex the arrow. That means it's a very strong arrow. So, um, like I said, safety precautions check your ball components, your tips are tight, fletching is attached, and the knockout it's all the way in, not just coming off or broke. Uh, one more thing on safety precautions is you treat a bow like you treat a vehicle. It's a, actually a weapon. A vehicle is a, is a weapon because you don't put attention and you get distracted, you hit somebody, you hurt yourself or hurt someone else and or kill them. So a car is a weapon, a knife is a weapon, a rifle, a pistol, and a bow is a weapon. So, uh, on your arrow release aid, make sure nothing is fried. Uh, the suit, the sewing is good. The bolt, the screw that's holding it is good. Your trigger is good. The spring is good. Some are spring loaded where uh, pushed forward, regardless if you push it back. Um, some they're more sensitive where you can just barely touch it and they open. Uh, make sure the buckle is good, the velcro is good. You put it like so, there's an opening over here. You, uh, there's different kinds, like I said. Uh, there's some that just um, grab it with your two fingers. Um, uh, they have different types you can look online. Uh, this one is just a Velcro. Some have uh, holes and it's more like a buckle style, like a belt. Um, you need to adjust these where you it's, it's tied to your hand and then you're able to use, to put these two fingers this way. Pushing your um, trigger forward. That way when you pull, you're not opening the trigger. If you happen to go like this, it's gonna open and the arrow is gonna deploy and it's gonna be an early release or a halfway release and the arrow is going somewhere. And that's where it comes to the point that you need to be extremely careful and also the way you hold your bow. When you're pulling your uh, string to, with a D-loop, you always aim towards the target or down or up. That's not like if you have a rifle, but I recommend always get used to aim at your target because if something happens, the arrow is going to your target. You don't want to point at a person. You don't want to point it down because they're going to shoot you 
foot. Um, and if you're in an archery range, you don't want to pull an up. You, you can shoot a lamp and the lamp is coming down. So rule of thumb is always aim at your target. When you have the bow, treat it like if it's loaded with explosives. So that's better to do that than get someone hurt. So the next part now, and it's gonna uh, it's gonna be part eight, how to shoot a bow after we have the safety precautions. And um, so uh, when you take, it's better if you're a beginner, take your bow to your archery. They'll set it up for you. Um, unless you want to do it yourself, but the way you set up your um, your arrow rest is you put the screw here. There's some that move up and down, left and right. Um, you use an Allen key, uh, put it in the screw. Okay. So now we're ready to uh, get the form, how to shoot it. So the idea is to, uh, before we pull the string, here is we're gonna. Um, I'm gonna sit, I'm gonna show you in a minute uh, to pull how to pull, and the form that we're gonna have uh, the string. Um, then after I pull the string, I'm gonna put my eyes through the peephole, and this peephole is gonna is gonna go in through the first uh, side from side pin, and it has to fit in the center. Um, since the people is just way too little, um, I'm gonna choose. I'm gonna use my hand and make it a little bigger hole. Um, I'm gonna turn my sights pins so you can have an idea. So the bottom side pin is 10 yards. People, when after we pull it towards our eyes, it's gonna be right here. So you see the first pin. On the bottom and that's where you're gonna aim to okay this is just an example um, the real thing is for you to go to the archery and see what I'm talking about okay so we make sure that now we're gonna shoot well we're gonna pretend I'm gonna shoot put it to the opening of your whisker arrow rest whisker Biscuit. Now, kind of goes right here uh, in the middle of your D, D loop, and it clicks. Okay, make sure it clicks. If it doesn't click, it means the knockout is uh, broken. Okay. Then the idea is to let me turn off the light. I don't need it. Okay. So, since you're a beginner, like I said, it's better if you use 45 pounds, 50 pounds, according to your height and age, um, that you can pull the string with not much effort or medium effort, but not like struggling or just really light because that means just the, the weight is too low for you. So not too low, not too high, something comfortable. You get your release aid in your hand, make sure the switch, you're pushing with the, um, uh, your fingers, both, uh, forward. You don't want to do an early release. That's not going to be good. So you push forward. So you open, unless it's a spring loaded, you're going to pull, but this one is not a spring loaded as in keep it closed. You hold it from behind, pushing it a little bit towards the front, so it's not going to release. Uh, posture straight, you raise your bow. Um, some people uh, leave your the, the forward arm already forward and pull with the right arm. Um, you can do both at the same time, kind of. And I, I find it better because you're push, pulling the, uh, the bow with both arms. And the idea is to go eye level. Um, you don't want to have it down or this way or this way. Like I said, uh, safety precautions always aiming at the target. So you pull it at the same time with both arms or you can do it just with the right, but it's going to be a lot of a strength and you can injure 
Um, I have some tips that I'm going to mention in the next uh, on point nine. Um, so, but um, so it's going to be hard for you to do it with your right shoulder if you're not used to use those muscles. So if you use both, kind of uh, not like this, but a little bit back, which is about right there when you see it. Um, uh, nobody's here. So that's what I'm aiming for. And I'm trying, this is for um, presentation purposes only. So I'm angling just a little bit my arm right here. Okay. I'm not having it straight. I seem to find this harder to pull it just with your right shoulder, right arm, or with the left arm if you're left-handed. So if you angle it a little bit and pull both at the same time, it's easier. Uh, everybody does it differently, so it's up to you, okay? So safety precautions point at the target. Extend your arm a little bit. Make sure your both fingers are pushing the trigger forward. Then you pull like so, okay? Um, as the bow, as you pull both, the bow is going to drop a little bit. It's going to be almost at the target. Now look, you look through, you close your eye, your not leading eye, and look through the peephole with the leading eye to the point of the pink, the first pink side, which is thin. Uh, then I find to be useful to um, breathe two or three times, and at the third, second or third time, you hold your breath. Then you push, pull the trigger, let it surprise you slowly, not to jerk it, and the arrow deploys, okay? Um, since I'm indoors, I can't deploy the arrow. Uh, so the it's hard to for me to show you, but I'll do it probably one more time. I'm trying to show you with my hands. The string, when it's pulled, the peep hole is gonna be right here, this peep hole gonna be right in front of my eyes then the string comes here and it goes back down so the idea is to have the string right in here between my lip and my cheek which is about right here and the string touching the tip of my nose and then the people is right in front of it um, so I'm going to show you one more time so you can see it. And then on the trigger, similar to marmanship, which is a rifle shooting, you don't jerk it off like this or pull your arm. Regardless of the trigger that you have, you always move your trigger after you pull. You move your finger forward slowly. Look at the target, even if it takes five, 10 seconds, wherever you're comfortable, and then slowly kind of let the finger drop and then it releases, okay? There's no such thing as hard pull or move your hand like that because it's gonna move your bow to the right or left. So the more stable you are, the better. Um, and the way in, I improve my group besides using stiffer arrows because that makes the, the flexion of the arrow smaller. Uh, besides that is the breathing. It also works for me good on rifle, rifle shooting. You breathe, exhale, breathe, exhale. You can do it two or three times. You don't have to do it three or four or five times. Whatever you feel comfortable. Third time or second time you breathe, you exhale halfway, then look at the target, pull slowly the trigger, let it surprise you, and it shoots. Um, I seem to find a better group uh, on my arrows, not dropping their bow as the arrow leaves, not as the arrow leaves, after the arrow leaves. So the way you hold the bow here 
and, and to put your riser or your handle between um, the palm of your hand, um, kind of let the ball rest. But um, a lot of shooters keep their fingers forward or like this because it's more a natural form, so you're not strain, straining yourself. But I would not leave the fingers forward. Why? Because the arrowhead or the field tip, it could catch on your fingers and you can get injured. So I recommend to, yes, let the bow um, rest on your palm, have, uh, I mean, the middle of the palm, but you can bring your fingers uh, nicely tucked in right here and hold the grip the same way every single time. Same thing with your string. String tip of your nose and get used to have your release aid or you can use this part of your hand to always touch your chin right here. And keep the same form. If you change the form and you one time you hold the bow too tight like this where you're not supposed to or too loose and the bow as the arrow leaves goes down you're gonna start missing losing arrows and shooting down so uh, like I said you have to keep always the same form this works with tar uh, rifle shooting too my much so you hold the bow pull your fingers up out of harm's way and just kind of tuck them in like that and hold it the same way you have to get used to so keep practicing Practice makes the mas uh, master. Uh, always practice too, that you will always hold the trigger forward a little bit with your two fingers. You never put your finger forward. You're not gonna, this This is not like uh, when you're turning, shooting a rifle that you put the finger over the trigger. You don't wanna do that. This is behind the trigger. Always, 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 okay? Um, so I'm gonna do the form one more time and then I'm gonna go to the next um, point okay point number nine which is extras so hold the D loop keep your form the left foot forward right foot back unless you're uh, left-handed hold your bow with the middle of the hand palm of your hand rest your fingers kind of be like this Pull, look to the peep hole, the tip of the nose of the string, it's on my nose, and the peep hole is about an inch or two. I can see the sight. I didn't point this way, I didn't point down, I pointed eyesight, and then it drops a little bit as, as a pull. So it's right here. The My finger is almost right below my ear, probably. Um, trigger is between my bottom of all leaves in my chin, tip of the nose on the string. I see the uh, first pin on the pit hole and then that's when I pull the trigger slowly, let me um, surprise and then shoot, okay? So I'm gonna retract it and you just have to practice. It's hard to show this on a video, you have to do it on your own. Uh, you have to be in the right facility, you do the right thing. Um, like I said, these are the basics, uh, basic lessons for um, how to know your bow and getting into uh, target shooting um, or hunting. Um, okay, so the uh, next uh, point will be extras. For extras, I have uh, different points, about five. Uh, and that would be for you to always warm up. Um, you can stretch this way, you can do jumper jacks, like this, uh, pull forward uh, your right arm and pull back. This is gonna stretch your muscles right here. Uh, same thing with the other side. You can go like this, and that will be really good. You do it for, I don't know, count to 60 seconds, 
that will keep your and rotate your shoulder blades that will keep your all of these muscles warmer um, you don't want to uh, get injured uh, in order uh, oh, comment number two on extras is to the way you increase your draw weight is to do workout uh, muscles on your body that are not usually used so um, you probably have to go to the gym um, or head um, a machine where you can uh, work out the muscles that you're gonna use uh, left-handed or right-handed it doesn't matter work out both um, the muscles that you used to um, you're gonna use to um, pull the string on the bow will be triceps right here there's three of them here um, you can do push-ups uh, grab a weight and pull it up and like I said push-ups and go on a chair behind a chair you go down and up um, there's different exercises you can go with them um, and then you're gonna work your so triceps your deltoids uh, you use that to raise your shoulders does the deltoids right here triceps these are to pull that way uh, extend your arms and then you got your trapezius which is goes from the back of your neck all the way to half your vertebra um, that part is what actually makes it go from here to here the uh, trapezius I mean, uh, rhomboid minor, serratus posterior, and rhomboid major. Uh, those three kind of give you half the equation right here. This. And then the trapezius is the one that gives you the extra pull. So all of them are in your back. I can't show you. And even if I did, uh, you know, without my shirt, it still would not show. But those are the muscle groups that you want to work um, as you can throughout days and that make him, uh, your whole torso and arms uh, stronger so you can increase your draw weight also the draw weight is related to your height and weight um, so um, you can be, you'll be able to adjust that at the archery side your arrow material like I said before um, you want to be able to choose arrows that are made of carbon, pure carbon or carbon blend. Uh, do not use fiber or fiberglass or wood. Um, I don't recommend those that are for longbow and um, recurve bow, which they go from 15 to 40, 50 pounds. Uh, and you might want to stick to two types of better it would be to use only one type of arrow but since you're a beginner you're going to be losing a lot of arrows um, so choose one arrow that are like three or four dollars each and as you get better you can choose to a different arrow that is a little more expensive and better made uh, just know one thing that when you choose the arrow if it's different spine it's going to fly different also the tips field tips bro heads um the grains you want to choose stick to one grain or one type of grain or one amount of grain like 100 grain do not keep changing to 150 200 grain 300 that's if you're going to shoot farther or you're using a long ball or a curve ball lastly would be to um, keep your arrow uh, like i said in a safe place do not leave it in the car in the cold or the heat uh, always care if you can carry it except for when you're going hunting or you're out and outside on the archery place is to choose a uh, case. Um, there are different types of casings. You can choose an expensive one for like $70 like this. It's foam in the inside. Um, this is a hard case. It's, I don't like them too much because uh, they're good. Uh, if you choose the one that is really well made, but that's gonna cost you like 200, 250, the airtight and they're for travel, uh, to get on a plane or etc. And you can drop the whole case and nothing will happen to the bow because they're foam uh, padded inside. But if I'm hunting or within the city and through the car, I I like it this better. It's made by uh, Legend. Uh, it has three pockets where you can put gear, release aid, tips, allen keys. Your arrows go in here. Um, it has inside uh, where 
your cams go and as velcro and also to hold your structure with your main bow in the middle with um, velcros and uh, this is a softer material and, and easy to carry and goes in your trunk or etc so that'll be the last thing and uh, that should be it for now hopefully you enjoy these um, nine major areas of um, knowing your bow and how to shoot a bow um, hopefully you like the video if you're the first time seeing my channel um, you can subscribe I appreciate it and I, um, I'll work to hear you have a good time till next time guys see you